warm welcome to a sunny, if blustery, home park for what promises to be an exciting top of the table clash between third place Plymouth Argyle and Darlington, who currently lie fourth in the third division table. Whilst admittedly it's early days, both Kevin Hodges and Dave Hodgson will be delighted with the start to the season their respective sides have made. Argyle boasts a 100% home record and are fresh from a fine 2 0 win up at Rotherham, no mean feat. Darlington have gone four games without conceding a goal now and have the second best defensive record in the division, a record battled only by the Pilgrims. Added spice, if at all needed, is provided by the fact that the last meeting between these two sides was at Wembley Stadium in the third division playoff final three seasons ago. In the biggest, in the biggest game in either side's history, Argyle won by a goal to nil and despite the passing of time, Darlington fans must be eager for revenge. One thing's for certain, the majority of that 43,000 crowd are not here today. Argyle give a debut to the loan signing from Huddersfield, Darren Edmondson, who fills in for the injury victim, Richard Flash. Youngster John Ashton makes way, while Steve McCall is still isn't fit. Let's go through the side then. Number one, John Sheffield. Number two, Darren Edmondson. Three, Paul Gibbs. Four, Ronnie Morget. Five, Captain Mick Heathcote. Six, Paul Watton. Seven, Martin Barlow. Eight, Sean McCarthy. Nine, Earl Jean. Ten, Simon Collins and 11, Chris Hargreaves. Lee Power, Kevin Wills and John Ashton are the substitutes this afternoon. Let's go for the um, visitor side this afternoon, Darlington. Number one, David Priest. Two, Adam Reed. Three, Richard Hope. Four, Craig Liddle. Five, Jason Devos. Six, Phil Brumwell. Seven, Carl Shutt. Eight, Michael Oliver. Nine, Darren Roberts. Ten, Marco Gabbiadini. And 11, Brian Atkinson, some experience in that Darlington side. The substitutes bench is taken up by Glenn Naylor, Steve Tuttle and Lee Ellison. The referee today is Clive Wilkes, the 43-year-old car trader from Gloucester. Mike Malarkey and Keith Townsend are the referee's assistants this afternoon. Peter Green is the fourth official. Well, a completely different atmosphere and a completely different setting to Wembley Stadium, but an important game nevertheless. Both sides hoping to continue their good start to the season. A win for either side could certainly see them go top of the league by the 5 o'clock this afternoon. It's Argyle attacking from right to left in the first half then. A good turnout nevertheless. A long journey for those Darlington supporters. Two sides with an excellent defensive record. Let's hope though we see plenty of goals this afternoon. Argyle will have been delighted to get over the disappointment of that defeat seven days ago up at Cardiff with a fine performance up at Rotherham. Rotherham have had a good start to the season. Blown away by Argyle. It's Gibbs with an early cross. McCarthy hoping to get on the end of it. Clear it's only as far as Martin Barlow. Barlow might have gone for the long-range effort and tried to thread it through to Earl Jean. Didn't really come off. Now it's Simon Collins to the new signing. First touch on a green and white shirt, Darren Edmondson. Here he is again. Barlow. Might have run too far. Goal kick. Darlington now on their first attack of the afternoon through Gabby Adini. He's been given plenty of space. It's a deflected shot. Well, that could certainly have gone in. Gabby Adini, who's had a fine start to his season in this new club, Darlington. Three goals in his last five games, Gabby Adini, and he was given so plenty of room to shoot, invited to shoot, really, by the Argyle defence. And in fairness, Sheffield was a beaten man, and luckily for him, it went just wide. Michael Oliver will take the corner kick then, the first of the afternoon. Again, not uncertain. I think it came off Watson last into the relieved hands of John Sheffield, but early problems for Argyle to endure, and they survive, but only just. Gavidini came very close. Sean McCarthy, who's had a great start to the season, not just the goals he scored, but he's held up the ball well superbly and invited other players into the game. Oliver, whose corner 
almost sparked off a bit of problems in the eye. Got a fence. Edmondson wanted to let the ball run, but there wasn't enough pace on the ball. And he's won himself a free kick. The foul there by Carl Schatt. Edmondson starting the game in midfield on the right hand side. Iger playing with a back four, getting rid of their wing back system because of Richard Flash's injury. They've got uh, Watson and Heathcote in central defence, Collins and Gibbs, the two full backs, it seems. For now, Edmondson starting in midfield. Gabby Adini. Edmondson had some nice early touches that would have done his confidence the world of good Gibbs acknowledges a poor ball Gabby Adini to Roberts Heathcote good defending and now it's Jean. But the referee plays advantage, and rightly so. Nice ball from Barlow to Sean McCarthy. McCarthy's on his own, really, as players desperately try and join him in support. Barlow's cross. Morgé desperately close to repeating his Wembley goal. Here he is again. The cross by Edmondson, it's a good one. Oh, Jean trying to chest it down, but couldn't control it well enough. Darlington survive. Gabby Adini. He's had a good start to the game, the Darlington number 10. But Darlington lose out in possession this time. It's Collins forward. McCarthy, what's he going to do here? Not much on that occasion. <coughs> this is Reed. It's a nice ball from Reed. Looking for Oliver. Heathcote stumbles but still survives. And now it's Martin Barlow. A possible ball to Eljean on the cards. Eljean trying to get past Little. Good turn of pace by Eljean. Still a lot of work for him to do. Try to thread a ball through to Paul Gibbs. Darlington defend well. Good turn there from Watton by Darren Roberts. Shut. Again, plenty of room to shoot. Gabby Adini now. Heathcote sticking close to his man. Gabby Adini has to play it back. I got giving Darlington far too much room in these early stages. Everton will let that run. Well, let's introduce you then to home part two, Darren Evanson. It's just a little, I think it was um, for that foul that the Argyle were allowed to play advantage for. Darren Evanson then been given his debut this afternoon, the loan signing from Huddersfield. He's filling in for the injury um, victim, Darren Flash, or Richard Flash rather, who's going to be out for two to three months with a knee injury. Everton started off at Carlisle before a big money, £200,000 move to Huddersfield in March 1997. He's only 26, but nowadays he's out of favour with the Huddersfield manager, Peter Jackson. Peter Jackson keen for um, Edmondson to put himself on the shop window more than anything, I think. He can play anywhere on the right-hand side of um, defence, Edmondson, but prefers wing-back. But he's shown um, in the first six minutes of his Argyle career that he's very comfortable on the ball. He's got another chance to prove that here. Rather poor ball there from Collins, so I think won't need me telling him so. Fine. Gibbs was fouled again, and this time the referee won't play advantage. Good 
play by Hargreaves. And then by Barlow. I'll go throw in. This is better from the Pilgrims. Barlow failed to play McCarthy. And now Darlington might break. Oliver. Trying to find Roberts. Collins thought about taking it back to Sheffield, but in the end went alone. Clive Wilkes gives a free kick to Darlington. And it's quickly taken. Plenty of room again. Oliver. Reed to his right. Oliver whips in across. And Sheffield flaps. And Darren Roberts knows how close he was to the opening goal of the game. Well, it was a great cross by Oliver. The type of cross that defenders hate, and John Sheffield as well. Might well have been Carl Shutton, not Roberts, who held his hand in his hands as he knew how close he was. But it was a fine chance, and the ball could have gone anyway. It went wide, and only just. Darlington had the best two chances of this game so far. And Gabby Adini, a fine long-range effort. Well, Gabby Adini certainly hasn't lost it. it a bit like the Sean McCarthy of the um, Darlington side. He's 30 years old now, but he's plenty of experience behind him. Made his name really at Sunderland before a big money, £1.8 million pound move to Palace. He joined in the um, summer after spells last season at Stoke and York. Remember in the um, Ken Brown days when he came to home park with Sunderland? And came to home park with Sunderland as they got a big 4-1 win. Those were the old days. Certainly got a few goals against Argo in the past. There was Gabby Odini again, hustling Paul Watton. Roberts. Rather snapped at his effort, but it's another effort at goal nevertheless, and they're all coming from Darlington at the moment. Visitors starting brightly. And not much singing from the Argyle fans at the moment. Rather silenced by the start of the game. McCarthy, a strong header. Argyle ball. Much as eager for Argyle to get on with things. Gibbs rather lacking support at the moment. Hargreaves leaves it for Jean. McCarthy. Collins has got his goalkeeper for support and rightly takes that option. Not the best of clearances, one for Edmondson to deal with. And battle with Roberts. Jay with a strong challenge there on I think it's Hope and Hope stays down took the ref for a while to notice him injured it's a strong challenge from Morgé typical of Morgé really But young Richard Ope, only 20 years of age, gets back onto his feet and the game can continue. 11 and a half minutes old. We can hear Jason Devos's um, strong Canadian accent all the way from the stands. Really commanding his defence. <laughs> the 
foul this time on Adam Reid. Another free kick to Darlington. Carl Shot wants to take it quickly, but it's not in the right place. Kevin Hodges and Steve McCall watched anxiously, both standing up at the moment. The free kick from Liddell. The header by Devos. Flick on. But a more cause for concern, even though the um, damage that time wasn't so great. Darlington are making all the right moves at the moment. We're seeing little of Jean and McCarthy as an attacking force. Things might change now as Argyle get a free kick. Jean fouled. That's the key for Heathcote to push forward. Hoping to add to the two goals he's already scored this season. Barlow. There was Heathcote, but Deeper Scott there first. And what an opportunity for Edmonton to open his account in style. He had to snap at it. And the ball was always rising, but it was a great chance for the new loan signing. And not only that, it was Argyle's first real chance of the game. It was Heathcote and Devos initially who were involved in a right old battle to try and win the ball. And when the ball ran loose, it fell to Edmondson, who perhaps should have hit the target. That came after 14 minutes. And perhaps new hope for the Argyle fans. That's Heathcote again. Collins to Mick Heathcote. Heathcote leaves it to Watton. Heathcote's back pass, or Watton rather, and that was Sheffield's clearance. Feels for handball ignored. It's now Gibbs. Hargreaves. Can we see Hargreaves for the first time this afternoon on that left hand side? Oh, he manages to get a cross in. That was John challenging. Appears for a free kick for the foul on Little. Ignored. Edmondson. The Argyle fan sensing a. Goal might be on the cards until I go completely mess things up and lose possession. Well, Sean doing his best to win back possession. That's better from Argyle. And the Argyle fans appreciate all the effort being put in now. The atmosphere is a lot better now. Well, both sides do have a good defensive record, but they also have strikers of a pedigree that suggest that goals can, can be scored this afternoon. We've certainly had the chances in the opening quarter of this game, quarter of an hour rather. Anyway, we'll do for McCarthy. Here's Watton. Gibbs was screaming for the ball and gets it now. Well, Gibbs, with a bit of luck, keeps possession, but in the end, luck ran out and Reed took over. Not a good ball from Reed. Paul Watton. Showing his ever-growing confidence in an Argyle shirt. Can old Jean get on the end of it? Reed plays the ball into the stands. Gibbs with the throw in to Martin Barlow. Doesn't pay off that time. Haven't seen much of Morgé in the 
opening stages of this game. Nice ball from Barla to Gibbs. Watson. I got spread the ball around nicely. Collins. Like I'll get a free kick. I sound surprised because I am. But Collins, I might be complaining on Ivor Argyle, especially if they get something from this. Again, Heathcote forward. Watson stays back. There's Gibbs. And there's Rossi! Rossi again haunts Darlington. It's a piece of Morgé's Wembley goal. And just like he did at Wembley Stadium three years ago, Morgé puts Argyle 1-0 up against Darlington. Well, it's another set-piece goal here at Home Park, and Morgé's the goal scorer. The free kick whips in, and Morgé lost his marker and it was a simple task really of putting the ball past David Priest into the back of the net and I got lead by a goal to nil Darlington started the game brighter but I got we're getting into the game more and more and their pressure is told with the opening goal of the game Morgé's second goal of the season following on from the goal he scored in the opening day against Rochdale I was just saying how um, Morgé hadn't been in the game, but I won't be complaining now, he's scored the opening goal. Um, Gibbs is all right, holds his shoulder under the challenge from his own player, Paul Watson. With such a thin squad, Argyle don't need a serious injury at this moment in time. Gibbs still looks uncomfortable. Morge, I think Gibbs is going to be fine. He just looks a bit hurt at the moment, but hopefully he's um, a strong enough character to carry on. Time, time, time. Heathcote was getting under more and more pressure, but he headed the ball back to Sheffield finally enough. Increases free kick. <laughs> Morge stud showing free kick. Two minutes, halfway through the first half. Argo won, Darlington nil. Darlington looking for that equaliser. And Gabby Adini was a free header almost, and he failed to make full contact. He knows what a good chance that was. In the end, Argo will be relieved just to have conceded the corner. And Argo struggled from the first corner of the afternoon, and they're going to struggle again. Again, it's Oliver who'll take it. Michael Oliver signed from Stockport. 
Sheffield this time. Reliable, great catch. Oozes confidence for the rest of the team when your goalkeeper comes out. He catches the ball with such comparative ease. John got a lot of spring in that one. Now it's Hargreaves. Hargreaves, a low cross. About to find John. Argo will make do with the throw in. straight into the arms of David Priest. Adam Reid. Devos, Canadian international. A term I use so often last season to describe Carla Corrison, of course. Gabriadini, it's gone quiet in the last 10 minutes. Got to be careful, I said the same about Mourget, didn't I? Watson, not a very good clearance. Shut now, he gets the ball first. Mourget only came off Oliver. Shut again. Out wide, Reed. First time ball. Away by Heathcote. Gabriadini now. Falls to the ground. And I thought for a horrible moment the referee's going to give a penalty, but the decision goes the other way. Gabriadini with a foul, he looks rather dumbstruck. Not surprising really because I failed to see much wrong in that. It's half of one, um, half a dozen of ones, six of the other, but never mind. You know what I mean. Needs a throw in. Evanson takes it quickly. Eljean. Well, the referee's going to give a free kick, and Argyle fans will be wondering what for, but I can understand completely why because it was um, a foul there by Eljean. Didn't make contact, but it was a rather overzealous challenge. Handball, I don't know what it is. Carl shut the offender. Why didn't the ball be played to Paul Gibbs? Paul Gibbs was completely unmarked on the left hand side, and Watson completely ignored him. Hargreaves will keep that in play. It's a cross looking for Heathcote, was it? No, Edmondson. Barlow, it's a bit of head tennis, falls to the ground, Oshon! Well, Oshon had to hit it first time. He toe-coped an effort towards goal, but unfortunately for 
St. Lucian International is straight into the arms of David Priest. Either side, it would have been 2 0. And now Jean looks very frustrated. Still, can't believe how he didn't score them. Brumwell. Richard Hope. It's Hargreaves now. Ronnie Morge. Morge trying to thread a ball through a la Scumport. So what was Jean, but it didn't come through this time. That's an eye-off throw. Go central and then place it to Watton. Watton, not a good ball. Sensibly leaves it. in favour of Darlington. Pal shot. Across, straight into the hands of John Sheffield. And now Morge. Again, a possible break on the cards here. Carlo bursting centrally. But it's still Ojo. Back now for Darlington. The break's not on the cards, but I got still in possession. Watson. Gibbs. They were trying to find Hargreaves, but the run wasn't quick enough. Paul Watson to Gibbs. One minutes. What and forward. Another pobble. <laughs> you can't do that, referee tells Paul Watson, free kick. Sean, only Mulcher in support. Now 
most I did well enough just to complete the bar. given away. And that was his young Adam Reed. Number 10, Gabbiadini. Barlow's had a good game in this first half. Here's the danger though, Atkinson, twisting and turning, gets in a low cross. Heathcote blocks it, Watson clears it. Reed. Foot up a bit high. That's what I thought, I thought it was an Argyle free kick and the referee disagreed, it's now Gabbiadini. Pressure now from the visitors, can Argyle hold on? It's a rather half-hearted cross, but it still could have spelt danger. Dangerous times, this. A long throw in. A flick on and straight into the hands of John Sheffield and Argyle can relax. Good spell of pressure from Darlington without really causing any serious damage on the John Sheffield. John Taji and Barlow. Gabbiadini, he'll have to go alone. But he'll go alone in style. Brilliant goal. Marco Gabbiadini earns applause from all four sides of the ground. His fourth goal in six games. It was a target for Mick Jones last summer. And you can see why. What an outstanding individual goal from Marco Gabbiadini. 35th minute, and it's 1 1. Goal from either side now that rather sums up the season so far. Argo have um, been outstanding from set pieces and a lot of goals through that way. Oh, Sean! Great play by Divos. Whilst Marco Gabbiadini has been outstanding in these early stages for Darlington and he scored another brilliant goal. Oh, Sean was through there. Good defending. It's the first corner of the afternoon for the Pilgrims. You have to say that goal from Darlington was coming. Now Gibbs, he's got a good corner on him. Looking for Heathcote. Edmondson, not the best of balls. And it's built as a potentially promising encounter and we've not been let down. The neutral have been entertained so far. And we certainly cannot predict at this stage what way the game's going. Here's Gabbiadini again. Free ball to the, the experienced Carl Schurt. And John Sheffield with luck on his side gets the ball. On his end to end stuff at the moment. Nine minutes before the break. Some good win play. Looking for Gabbiadini. And again, Sheffield has to be alert. He's doing all the work at the Argyle team at the moment. Morge beats his marker. This ball is disappointing. Although Morge is furious with McCarthy for not making the right side of run. Oh, 
Hargreaves. Haven't seen much of Hargreaves in this first half. He's had a good start of the season. Barlow. He's not going to find McCarthy, is he? Well, he is, thanks to McCarthy's determination. Although it's going to be a Darlington throw. For now, just quieting, quieting him down a little. A little. <laughs> it's Gibbs. McCarthy trying hard to get past the formidable looking Jason Devos without much luck. Come on, you don't let him do this. got too fanciful there. Paid the punishment. Third division clearance there, I tell you. Well, Morshe won the ball, but his studs were showing, and I think that's what caused the Darlington dugout to stand on their feet. Well, he won the ball, and he's going to get a booking for it. Moshe is dumbstruck. It's not been a dirty game by any means of the imagination. And Moshe will feel rather unfortunate to go into the book. I think it was the intent rather than anything else that forced the referee to show you the first yellow card of the afternoon. Four minutes of the first half remaining. 1-1. One, one. Darlington free kick. When they eventually decide they want to take it. Adam Reid's going to try and pick out a man. It's a low drive. And a poor effort in fairness. Now, can Oljean get a bit of luck here? Yes, he can! Oljean! He's done well to get this far. Can he finish? He falls to the ground. Arco wants a penalty. For a moment, I thought that Clive Wilkes was going to give it. Falls to the ground and Darlington wants a penalty all over Fools this time. And again the referee not interested. Well we could have had a penalty at either end. I can't complain that they should have had a penalty even now. Well high drama as the game bursts into life. Oh John at one end really should have got an effort on on target. He was losing his way as he fell to the ground. The referee didn't give a penalty and then Oliver bursting through at the other end. Again falls to the ground and Darlington themselves feel they're entitled to a penalty. Oh, 
Credit to Ojean for creating the chance in the first place. Now what's the referee doing? He's stopping the play to book Marco Gabbiadini. An experienced man should know better. So both goal scorers now in the book. Whether that was for descent or was it a foul that I didn't see, I'm not too sure. Eventually finds Marco Gabbiadini. He's going to try again, and this time Sheffield won't be beaten. Here's Gibbs. With a minute remaining, can Argyle get a goal on a stroke of half time? Out comes David Priest. Come on, Darlington like right to build from the back. We've shown that throughout the first half. Sometimes the more direct approach might just be a bit more beneficial. Well, Carl Schott's going to go off. Obviously an injury. And the referee wanting it to all of be, be official. So the former Birmingham Leeds and Sheffield Wednesday man, Carl Schott, will go off. And Glenn Naylor, signed from York at the start of the 96-97 season, will come on in his place. Not a bad replacement to have, though, Glenn Naylor. Got a good reputation in the lower leagues. As the referee's assistant acknowledges there's one minute left of the first half. Not much time then for Plymouth then. They'll have to be quick. Otherwise we're going to be all square at half-time. Here's Hargreaves. We came off Hargreaves last in the eyes of the ref. Darlington throw. Again, Sean falls to the ground. We we'll have a strong challenge then by McCarthy on Priest. All unnoticed by the referee. Things just getting a bit heated out there. Morge and um, Barlow and Liddle all involved. But there can't be much time now. I really do have to get on with things. Collins is free kick. Whereas the referee looks at his watch. Here's Gibbs. Well, 1-1, one, one. not much to choose between, this, choose between these two sides as the, um, in the league table and not in the game either. Darlington started off the better side, Gabbiadini and Ishak both came close before Ronnie Morger gave Argyle the lead. Marco Gabbiadini though showed his class with a superb equaliser 35 minutes into the game. We could have had a penalty at either end of the field. Can't complain about the entertainment value. Half-time, Plymouth 1, Darlington 1.
Speaking to the Argyle fans at halftime, the Aber or the usually faithful Green Army, the consensus seems to be that Darlington were the better side in the first half and deserve to be in front. Fans not too impressed with Argyle at the moment. Being the neutral that I always am, of course, and I thought it was a very entertaining first half, although Darlington admittedly did have the better chances. Apart from the goal, when did David Priest? When was David Priest forced into a save? Although the same could be said about John Sheffield. It was an entertaining first half. Let's hope it continues for the next 45 minutes. Got a co-commentator here. And Darlington start the ball um, start the second half on the ball. A substitution on the stroke of half time. Don't forget Glenn Naylor now on for Carl Shutt. Long range effort. Michael Oliver never really gonna threaten um, John Sheffield with an effort like that though. Campbell, oh Sean wants to take it quickly. Sean McCarthy. Well, the ball will still stay in play. Edmondson. Well, I got very lucky to get a, a corner there, but um, controversial all round, really. First of all, was it a free kick? David Priest claiming he didn't leave the area with the ball in his hands, and then Old Sean took it very quickly. Simple ball to Sean McCarthy, and McCarthy really should have done better. Trying to tap the ball into an empty net. Didn't happen. Nevertheless, it's the corner which Gibbs is going to take. And Heathcote lurking dangerously there or thereabouts. Will evade Heathcote, but not Ronnie Moshe. A pierce for Hample. Hits the chest of Jason Devos. Plainly a signal there by the referee. And I think he was right. The players aren't complaining anyhow. Here's Collins. Well, the halftime team talk from Kevin Hodges spring our goal into life. And now McCarthy and Devos having a little one-on-one. -on -one. Or Little, rather. Well, Little's furious. He's holding his head, or his ear, rather. Was it an elbow by McCarthy? The thing's just getting a bit agitated out there. McCarthy protests his innocence. Are we, gonna, are we gonna get a handshake? I don't think we are. Well, we do at the end, but I think it's more because of the referee insisting on it more than anything else. Well, this is a very stern talking to by the referee, Sean McCarthy and Craig Little, being warned about their future conduct. And at last, we can now concentrate back on the football again. Long ball from Priest. Sean McCarthy now against Devos. I, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. No doubt there's some Darlington fans out there fuming now that I'm not spelling his name right. Or, never mind. Hargreaves. No problem about his name. Skips past the challenge. Hargreaves to well, Sean. In the end, harmlessly through to the goalkeeper.
Barlow. Just possessed by Roberts. And now it's Atkinson. Gabbiadini, superb! And John Sheffield got a hand to it. It's a superb effort by Gabbiadini, but an even better save from John Sheffield. But like a bolt of lightning, Gabbiadini was suddenly free. A low drive, and it was an outstanding save by John Sheffield. The supporters were calling him a different class at half-time, and I think that was quite accurate description of Gabbiadini. He looks superb this afternoon. It's Roberts going up for the corner. And this time it's a goal kick. Dan Roberts signed from Chesterfield on a free in July 96. He's holding his head and following the challenge from Sheffield. McCarthy was just waiting for Little to make a mistake there. I'll go frame. against Heathcote. Gibbs got in there first. Barlow. With a bit of help from Auger in possession. Auger couldn't control the ball. And the game rather flat for the last couple of minutes. Flag is up, the referee rightly plays on. Darlington in possession. Great challenge from Watson. And Morge. Edmondson, not seeing much of him in the second half. I got fans for the first time today, a bit impatient. Morge, a strong challenge. That's more like it. McCarthy. And the ball's gone out of play in the eyes of the referee's assistant. And one or two accusing fingers being pointed at Morge from the Darlington dugout. kick and that seemed very unfair but never mind Nader was fouled apparently and now Richard Hope will take the free kick Heathcote to Barlow Barlow loses it Oliver now Oliver long range effort very disappointing but the danger was there much to John Sheffield's annoyance I'm okay, really going to have to move up a gear if they're going to win this game. Darlington looking like the side who's going to cause the problems at this moment in time.
carpet. That's a nice ball to Moshe. Just didn't have the pace to get on the end of it. Collins. I got with plenty forward. One of the McCarthy. Atkinson in the end. Pushes the ball out wide. Roberts. Two goals recently against Cardiff. Roberts, he might want another here. He said tries to play the ball to Atkinson, but a poor ball and Roberts. His reaction says it all. Promising, Gibbs. Across the face of the goal, and Jason Devos taking no chances. And in the end, the win held the ball up. Could easily have gone in, had to be tipped over by the keeper. Corner kick. Well, Devos, it was an awkward ball to deal with. The type of ball defenders hate. And it's now an Argyle corner kick. Third of the game for the Pilgrims. Barlow, who's he going to pick out here? The corner's good. McCarthy, free header. Heathcote in there. Slight appeals of handball. Gibbs is going to go for glory. And the offside flag is up. Jean -Luc might well have been who was offside. And a free kick to Darlington. Something for the Argyle fans to cheer about. As the sun once again shines on Hope Park. Leaf coach challenge. 4-3 now to Darlington in the corner state. Darlington might be making a change in a moment. But for now, all eyes on this Darlington attack. Corner swung in. Second opportunity for Darlington. That was Oliver, only as far as Gibbs. He let the ball run to Sheffield. Well, Darlington must sense that they can get something from this game. I'm talking about all three points. They're the team on top at the moment. And it's completely up to them whether they want to go for it. Moshe, this is a bit of a scuffle developing, is there? Tempers just about calmed down. Now Darlington, it's three against four. Oliver, out wide, Roberts. That's what we like to see from Collins. In the end, it's just a Darlington throw. But Collins lets praise for some good defensive work. Fourteen minutes on the clock in the second half. One-one. The game could go either way. That's a handball, surely. Richard Hope, the offender. in fairness, and now it's Morge, Edmondson. That's a foul there, clipping the heels or the ankles of um, Darren Edmondson. Free kick to Argyle. Darlington dug out again, infuriated. They've been very animated all afternoon, really. Gibbs. 
Straight into the hands of David Priest, always stretching but always comfortable. Now it's Reed. Watson, a mistake. And Gaviadini, what's going to get to it before Heathcote got there first? Watson, though, still might be punished for his error. Darlington, plenty of bodies forward. You'd have to be Dickens to realise they're there. Darlington are probably the best side to have visited home park so far this season. For once at home park this season, it's not been Argyle's day so far. Had it pretty much their own way so far. But it was far too early for the Argyle supporters to get too confident and complacent. Gibbs. Well, it was that too, the cry from the supporters, and um, it's a Darlington player in the end, Glenn Naylor. Heath coach to Edmondson. Emerson control lets him down. And he gets a free kick, and Darlington dug out again, fuming. And the Argyle fans are getting more and more angry. to say it did look a bit harsh the free kick but the um, reaction of the Darlington dugout and management team was uncalled for. It would be even more controversial if Argyle gets something from this free kick which Gibbs is going to take. Where's well, a repeat of the Halifax goal is it? Unbelievable. Gibbs has scored a rather freakish goal against Halifax with a similar free kick. Came very close again and not for the first time in the second half forced David Priest to tip over. I go back all level now on the corner front, for all. And it's going to be a Gibbs corner, with the added spice of the wind helping it along its way. Or well, Steve Boss with the header, it'll be a corner on the opposite side now. And for once the pressure coming from the Plymouth side. 17 minutes into the second half. Barley worker this time will take it. Right footed. The keeper flapping. Here's Hargreaves. Let's the ball run out for a throw in. It's Morge. And this time he commits a foul. Obstruction, was it? Heathcote was only going to be the only winner there. Hopeful ball from Atkinson. What's on this time? No, no excuses. A long, long clearance from Sheffield. Searching for McCarthy. Here's Gibbs. He'll get a corner in the end when perhaps a first time cross might have been a better option. A corner's not a bad option in the end. Because again, it gives the very dangerous threat of Mick Heathcote a chance to push forward. But you need better corners than that. Gibbs, one touch and then the shot. Came off Devos, there'll be another corner. And now Argyle sprinting ahead in the corner stakes. Seventh for the game. Oh no, it's better this time. There's McCarthy. And this time it's a goal kick. Just like one or two appeals from the Argyle players. Sunderland last year, David Priest, the goalkeeper. 
after making four appearances for the England under-18 side. Lots of potential in this guy. <laughs> 20 minutes into the second half. Sheffield, a long clearance. Argyle again can't capitalise. Edmondson. Nice skill there by Hope. And that was flat in the face of Atkinson. Hargreaves, oh, his fancy skill didn't really come off. Might see Lee Power be introduced to the fray in the next few minutes. Oh, Jean possibly coming off? That's just speculation. McCarthy. This ball is disappointing. Gabbiadini, dangerous to give him some space. It was an intelligent ball, if not successful. The referee's assistant having a word with the management team in the, dug in the Darlington dugout, just telling them to calm down, calm down things a little. Even the security guards are having a word. That's giving him a sense of power for the day. Auger, strong, and he won the ball as well, more importantly. Edmondson. Not a good ball from Edmondson. kick halfway through the second half Edmondson with a foul all niggles rather than serious fouls but they're all being punished by the referee nevertheless and Darlington are getting more and more space up front commanding Jason Devos is pushed forward Made his name at Sunderland, old Brian Atkinson. Made over 200 appearances for them. He takes the free kick. And the ball's in play, and there is Divos. A soft goal for Plymouth Argyle to concede. Again, Gabbiadini involved. And Divos with a very simple chance of nodding the ball into an empty net, really. And Argyle now in deep trouble. 24 minutes into the second half. Darlington lead by two goals to one. Jason Devos, the Canadian international, scoring the goal. El Jean, can he reply in kind? No, he can't. That goal coming after 69 minutes. Edmondson. You can't say Darlington didn't deserve that goal. And the flag is off for offside. Well, we've heard a lot about Jason Devos coming into this game. One of the unknown Darlington players, really. He's made over 30 appearances for his country. And at six foot four inches tall, he's one of the most... 
strongest players in the league. Although he didn't really need his strength for that goal, just um, common sense really. Didn't have to do anything elaborate, just knock the ball into the net. Darlington lead by two goals to one. And Igar really do need to change things now. It's not gone their way this game. For the first time, Igar fans being frustrated here at Home Park. chance for the first time in the league this season for Lee Power to make a name for himself. He's going to come on any moment, maybe a double substitution. The young Kevin Wills may also make an appearance. Youth over adversity perhaps. Divos for the foul, Jean offended, and now it's a double substitution for Plymouth. We know who's coming off, who's coming on? Hmm? Well, Paul Watson, the centre back's coming off, as is Chris Hargreaves, who's had one of his quieter games for Plymouth. And Lee Power, yet to open his goal scoring account for Plymouth, will come on, as will Kevin Wills, who only made his debut as a young 17 year old on Tuesday night up at Rotherham. His first ever appearance at Home Park, a big moment for the number 13. And I go now going for broke. With 19 minutes left on the clock. Edmonton's free kick. McCarthy. Gibbs, first time header. The flag is up, so Lee Power, if he had a scored, it wouldn't have counted. Well, Lee Power did score in the pre-season against um, Birmingham. Started against Rochdale, had a goal disallowed, and hasn't started a league game since. Wells for Jean. And now, not for the first time, Liddell's lost his temper. And Liddell's making a complete fool of himself. He should just keep his temper to himself. gives it up a free kick, Sean the Fender. Home Dave has not gone according to plan. Morge, his goal seems a long way off now. The referee was going to blow up for a free kick, but plays the advantage. Gibbs. Well, Gibbs loses out completely. And quarter of an hour left on the clock is Gabbiadini.
Good flick on there by Jean to Lee Power. And the offside flag saves Argo. Darren Roberts was on the break. And that was close. Offside flag was up again. There was no need to blow up this time, the referee. Heathcote celebrated his birthday in the week, 33 years old now. The celebrations will go a bit flat if Argo don't get a result this afternoon. Here's Gibbs. Hodges encouraging his side. They've got to go for broke now. to make anything happen there. Barlow can't get it. Much of the annoyance of the Argyle fans and now Darlington break. Naylor. It's a disappointing ball trying to pick out the run of Roberts. But still Darlington retain possession. And Argyle fans frustrated to the end of the moment. Oliver. Lee Power. Good ball to Wills. Wills has got Edmondson to his right. Number 11's Atkinson. Scoring up at Darlington and the game's all but sewn up. Gabbiadini, the flag is up, so Argo will be saved for now. chance for Wales to make his day. Well, Craig Little's been walking on a tightrope all afternoon. Not so much for his challenges, but the way he's been losing his temper time after time. And he yeah, can have no complaints about going into the book. Last chance saloon, and it was a terrible challenge on the youngster. Well, Gibbs scored with a more fortuitous free kick against Halifax. Can he have a more Realistic effort to go into the back of the net this time. It's Himmel Barlow who's going to take it. Heathcote's also out there in case Arco decides to play the short one. But surely they're going to have a pop at goal from this distance. With 11 minutes remaining, are we going to get a spectacular goal to lift the gloom out currently surrounding home park? It's either Barlow or Gibbs. Gibbs hits the wall. Gibbs again. Well, that could have gone in. David Priest watched in horror, completely helpless and stranded. And Gibbs desperately unlucky not to have scored his third goal of the season. Well, they either go in or they don't, and in that occasion it didn't. That's ten minutes now left on the clock. hope and time runs out for Plymouth power loses possession Heathcote the flag stays down Lee Power forces a save out of the keeper but it was never really going to go in
Carlo. Ojean now is going to have to go alone. Can Ojean equalise? The challenge was by Reed. Eighth corner of the game for Plymouth. Argyle fans sensing an equaliser could be on the cards. Well, Argyle had to pressurise the Darlington defence, and at least they're doing that now. Uh, not a best of corners. McCarthy always struggling to keep the ball in play. They'll alone find a teammate. The referee just wants a word with his um, assistant, or rather vice versa. What's the referee now going to be doing? Well, whilst all this is going on, we're going to have a substitution. Phil Brumwell's coming off. And Steve Tuttle, another signing from York. Injury in last season. Hopefully, he'll have a better campaign this time round. That's wasted a bit more time for Darlington. But old Adam Hodgson's been a very animated figure all afternoon, certainly passionate about his team. Break it to Argyle. Heathcote will push forward. Wills. Nice bit of skill from the youngster. And tempers again have been on boiling point without exploding into life so far. But people pushing each other, Morgé involved. And that's the referee. He's not even interested in the brawl that's taking place at the moment. He's having a word with Steve Tuttle, who's going to be booked immediately after coming on. Young um, Kevin Wells certainly had a harsh introduction into league football. One or two challenges that have been robust to say the least. To the this is going to add a bit more injury time if, as a consolation to Plymouth. They only need all the time they can get. Surely too far out for Gibbs to have a public goal. Maybe one from the training ground. Six minutes remaining. Barlow. Well, that was Ronnie Morge hoping to get his second of the game. Didn't really make full contact. Pass, scrapping it for everything. On, and in the end, Darlington happy just to, um, well, power exchanging blows, is it, with Naylor? <laughs> what was all that about? Power looks furious. It's been a Rather lively for a few minutes without being into anything too serious, I'm sad. The referee's always been in control of the situation. It's a rather eerie silence over Home Park, really, at the moment. And 
the yellow card to Naylor, and a yellow card I think is going to be given to Power as well. Suddenly the referee adding a few names to his book. It was quite a trouble-free afternoon before the last few minutes. Five book or six bookings now in total. Four for Darlington, two for Plymouth. Sean, he falls to the ground. And this time again, a little bit angry. This time that Sean play acted. Well, four minutes left. The countdown's beginning. Darlington, it looks like now, content to defend. Gabardini, the furthest forward, and he's only halfway in his own half. Well, if he's stopping his watch, at least as his substitution is made, and Gabardini, who's perhaps been the man of the match, is going to come off. And Lee Ellison is going to come onto the field of play for these last few moments. Trying to find power. Away by Little. Wills. Such a short player. He's got a lot of strength on him. And determination. Morge. Emerson as the flag stays down. Here's a chance. McCarthy came rushing in. There's been a clash of heads. And the referee has to stop play. More than four minutes left. Might be our man and Redu's down. But neither that injury looks too serious, I'm glad to say. And if Darlington do win, well, it won't make up for the disappointment of losing at Wembley, but it will help. I think Darlington were one of the best sides the Argo promoted in that league. You're very unlucky not to have gone up alongside Argo. Did the double over Argyle three seasons ago and looks like they're going to get another win this afternoon unless Argyle get a dramatic goal in the last few moments. Clearly onside is Lee Allison. Roberts for support. Still Allison happy just to um, play time on that corner flag for now. Well played Edmondson to finally dispossess him. Morge. I go throw. They gain ten yards. Edmondson. Build-up's quite attractive. It's going to be the goalkeeper's as he flaps, but he gets it the second time. We're now approaching the 45th minute. Well, Kevin Wills has had a bright 15 minutes since coming on. It'll be one positive thing from today's game. assistant now um, it's saying there's three minutes of stoppage time to be played we suspect there'll be more than that in fairness with so many stoppages in this second half Well, 
Argyle have started the season off brighter than a lot of people have expected, but today we found out that the third division isn't going to be the roller coaster ride we all expected it to be. Argyle fans have learned that the hard way. It's been a very good performance from Darlington, and if they do win this game, there'll be a few people who say they didn't deserve it. They've probably been the better side. That causing John Sheffield too many problems. They've had the half chances, they've had the possession. And they've contained Argyle, more importantly. Roberts' ball is disappointing. It's now Heathcote. Barlow. Edmondson. Morget. Lee Power. Sporting a nice pair of green boots, but he's um, dispossessed. The boots don't do much for him now. third minutes of stoppage time. Edmondson. Had a great chance in the first half. The flag is up, preventing Lee Power from having an almost certain shot on target. John was never going to win that one. Power was never going to get to that ball either. Collins. Power, that's a nice turn. Gibbs, his first time cross is disappointing. He might get a second bite of the cherry. It's better this time. McCarthy's in there, Martin Barlow! Blocked by a resolute Darlington defence. Morche! Oh, John! Great defending again, this time Naylor. There's still hope, Plymouth. Oh, Jean. Well, it's a free kick in a dangerous position. And our goal has to push everyone forward. And indeed, everyone, by Wills and Sheffield, is in that penalty area, or there or thereabouts. What can Gibbs produce here? He has to whip a ball into that penalty area and hope for the best. Hope an Argyle player can get a touch. And there is the full-time whistle. Darlington win. It's top of the table clash by two goals to one. Argyle came so close at the end, but in the end, their best wasn't good enough. Darlington just about deserving their win. And that long journey for those Darlington supporters made all the worthwhile. Darlington players absolutely delighted with their performance. It looks also promising when after 19 minutes, Ronnie Mourget repeated his Wembley goal with another this afternoon to put Argyle ahead. But man of the match, Gabby Adini, equalised after 35 minutes with a lovely curling effort that gave John Sheffield no chance whatsoever. And Darlington, who dominated the second half, really, got a goal after a goal mouth scramble. Jason Devos, the big Canadian number five, headed home, a simple task, really. And it's Plymouth Argyle 1, Darlington 2, and Argyle will have to pick themselves up now. Darlington delighted, it's their day, and they deserve all the applause they get now from both sets of supporters. Thank you very much for watching. Plymouth 1, Darlington 2.